In this tutorial, I'm going to show you what the Elementor Pro Media Carousel widget does, how it works, what it looks like, all of its settings, and a cool demo of what you can do with it. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what is going on? My name is Bjorn. If you like WordPress tips and tricks and always getting better at it, make sure you click subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And this video is part of the Elementor Pro playlist in this channel link in the description down below or part of the comments down below. Make sure you check out the whole playlist to see all the widgets in action. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you get on the Elementor Pro Ultimate Course waitlist, which I'm building right now. I'm still in the process of building it. It's not completed yet. Getting on the waitlist is no obligation. But if you do like Elementor and you want to know how to do everything with it, get on that waitlist. Link in the description down below. And with that out of the way, let's hit the screen capture. I'll see you there. Next, we're going to check out the media carousel. I just copy this, paste it down here. Media, oh boy, carousel element. There we go. Go to the grid icon, drag and drop our media carousel in there. It's pre built with three on one row, but then if you click again, the next one, next one, next one, next one actually has five that are pre set up for you. And probably pre-set up just placeholders, nothing really there. You can add images and video. If we just do images first, let's add a strawberry. Good looking image over on this one, item number three. Let's add these oranges. And then in the middle, number two, you're gonna add a video. It's gonna get a link from a YouTube channel. So once you have a link, you just paste it in here. And the video uh, sometimes does show in here, sometimes not. Right now it's not. But if we go ahead and update this and then preview it on the live site, we can see how the light box functionality of that element works. Let's scroll down to the very bottom and we have our image. When you click on them, nothing happens. If you click on the video, the video opens up in a light box and it starts to play. Click on the X up here to close it. Click on the right arrow and then we have, that's the thumbnail for that video. So then it, this, this scrolls through the available videos and there's only that one. So the light box is for videos specifically, not for the images. And as you saw, it does not pull a thumbnail of your video. So if you wanna add a thumbnail for your video, you have to add that after and add it manually right in here. So we could have, None of these really apply. Let's actually get the, the real thumbnail for that video. Let's drag and drop it into here to upload it and then insert. And now we have the actual thumbnail for that video appearing. It does not pull in the thumbnail automatically. That's different from the video element, which does pull the thumbnail. The media carousel element does not. And then we can customize additional items. We just did the first three. You can do four and five. You can add a whole bunch, I believe 10. No, you can add more than 10. The reason I say 10 is there's a setting down below where slides per view, you can set the 10. So if we set this to 10, it shows 10 slides in a row if you have 10. Or since I only have three, it only ever shows those three as content. So we could just set this to three, but you can also have it so there's slides down here instead of these buttons. We have a number of slides to scroll. When you scroll, it scrolls through seven slides, if you choose seven, which I did here. If you just scroll just one, then it'll just go from one slide to the next. If you choose three, it's gonna go from the original three and then replace them with the next three. I only have two in here in this case, but you kinda get what I'm saying. I'm gonna keep this as one. If you choose fade, we then fade between slides, and as you can see, there's just one slide here, and you fade between them. For cube, also just one slide, but this time there's like a cube turning. And for the slide, that's what we had before. You can change the height, like so. A little bit taller might be better. Change the width. Wider is often better, this kind of thing. Under additional options, we have the ability to change these dots to something else. Also turn off the arrows with that toggle. We can change the dots to be a fraction. 
So we're on slide set one of four in this case. Tune it to progress. So if we carry on, we should see some progress down there. And we do not. Oh, it's at the, it's at the top. Progress at the top. So if we go back, our progress is not working right. OK, let's put it back to dots. The transition duration is how long it takes to slide. This is half a second. We can have it autoplay or not. If we do autoplay, it's five seconds between every slide switch. Infinite loops, so it always goes around and around. You can pause when someone interacts with it, like hovers over it, touches it with the, with the mouse. We can have an overlay if we want. If we choose text, it will take the title, caption, description of the image. If you don't have a title, action, or description when you uploaded the image, you didn't enter one, then nothing will show, as this is the case right here, where I didn't actually add captions or titles or descriptions. You can also have an icon overlay. I'm just going to keep mine at none. You can change the image size. This is the size that's loaded into the slider, not the actual size that's displayed in the slider. So if we choose a thumbnail, these will be pixelated because they have to zoom in. So we want to choose the smallest possible image size that looks good with the size of the slider, which is medium in my case, because the smaller it is, the faster it'll load. You can change them to cover, contain, and auto. Cover will stretch them to fit in the area. You can change the skin. So we have the carousel, also have the slideshow, which has the slides down below. Now for the slideshow, you want to make sure that the image you load is a bit bigger. As you can see, this one's pixelated. So if we go down to image size and we choose large, now this image is nice and clear. And if you have the slideshow, you can change how these images display down below here. You can change the height of everything using this slider here. You can have slides per view again. Right now there's five slides per view. If we change that to two, we just have two and a half actually. So it shows half of each on the other side. Kind of a new age design. But for three, it doesn't. For four, it shows half again on each side. You can change the, the aspect ratio of the image. So right now they're 21 by 9. 16 by 9 is a widescreen. 4 by 3 is old screens. And 1 by 1 is same height as width. And the one you choose depends on your image. So if you find all your images are widescreen or portrait, or sorry, landscape images, choose that. If they're more portrait images, maybe one to one or four to three, choose that based on what your image type is. And we also have cover flow, which if you have a Mac, you've probably seen this in your finder before, but basically just shows this fancy way of displaying the covers. And my personal favorite is the carousel. So I'm going to keep it on there. And that's how you do the media carousel. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And also consider buying Elementor through the affiliate link down below. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase it that way, but Elementor does send me a few dollars commission, which helps me keep these glorious lights on. And if you do purchase through there, thank you very much. And next up was clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.